Greetings and welcome to another video in our Elite Dangerous series. In this episode, we're going to talk about voxel mapping. If you've been playing the game for a while or you've been exploring, you might have heard the term or not been sure what it's all about. In short, voxels are the way Elite Dangerous handles systems inside sectors. The galaxy itself is divided into sectors, which are a cube 1280 by 1280 by 1280 light years in size, each having a unique name. The sectors themselves do not align with the galaxy map coordinates. Instead, they have their own X, Y, and Z coordinates. They are essentially a list starting from the bottom left corner of the voxel, i.e. X0, Y0, Z0, and they go left to right on the X axis, then bottom to top on the Y axis, and then near to far on the Z axis. This all sounds a little bit confusing to begin with. However, we can use a program called the Elite Dangerous Journal Processor, which among other things, lets us do voxel mapping. We'll go into a little bit more detail about it later on, but for now, we bring up a window. We can see the voxel view. So what we're looking at now is the sector as a voxel. Boxels are broken down to eight sizes by mass code, ranging from H, the largest in size of mass, as we can see here, which are 1280 light years on a side, all the way down to A, which are the smallest in mass in size, 10 light years per side. But the H voxel covers the entire sector, and there only being one AA H voxel. As you move down the mass codes, the size of the cubes or voxels are halved, these being 640 lights on the side, S being 320 lights on the side, all the way down to the A's. Hopefully that makes it a little bit clearer, and now you can see it visualized. But why should we care about voxels then? The too long didn't read version is, systems in a voxel tend to share similar characteristics. If, for example, you find an Earth-like world in the system, then the other systems in the same voxel can have a slightly higher chance of having earth likes. The three letters in a system name denote the voxel. For example, Sinifu, no idea how it's meant to be pronounced, but there you go, BN H D11 90. The first part of it, the Sinifu, is the sector name. BN 8 is the voxel identifier, D is the mass code. 11 is the series number, which we can ignore in this video, and I've had it explained to me, and it is very, very confusing and technical. And 90, in this case, is the system number. SNFU BN HD11 0 would be the start of the voxel. So ideally, you want to start your mapping there. But just to note, some voxels may not have a series number. As an example, I see. 239 sector AF A D72. There was a lot more to the voxels, and I'll link to some guys that go into it in way more detail in the description below. This leads us on to the Elite Dangerous Journal Processor, and I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Amongst other things, this will help us with the voxel mapping. They can do this manually by copy and pasting the system changing the system number and plotting a route, but EDJP makes it far easier. So if I stop the processing for a second, when you first run the program, it will pop up with a config box and it should hopefully have, there we go, your journal path. If you can't find it, click on the browse button, but set the path. You've got some other options in here for other parts of the application, such as the overlay, hotkeys, screenshots, and the advanced. We're not going to go into this now. We can do another video on other parts of this later. So how do we actually use EDJP to map the voxels? First thing we need to do is click on Start Processing. That reads your journal files to work out where we currently are. We can then click on Voxel Survey, which pops up another window. Now on here, we've got a couple of options. We can use the current system we're in, 
we can use the last selected system and the last plotted system, which will be on the galaxy map. We can use the next voxel, or we can open an existing survey if we've already got one. In this case, we're going to use our current system. So we click on the go button. This will put us back at the beginning of the voxel. And we've got a couple of other options which can be useful. We've got there ignore systems you've already visited, ignore systems currently in EDSM, attempt to skip completed systems in EDSM, or process the voxel in reverse order. Whether you want to use those, it's up to you. I would leave ignore systems I've already visited on. The other three, personal choice. So now what we need to do is click on save and start. And there we go. Voxel survey started at Senefu BN dash H D11 dash zero, which is the start of the voxel. Now to use it in the game, what we need to do, we pop back into Elite Dangerous for a second. So if we open up the galaxy map, click on the search bar, do control V to paste the contents of the clipboard into the search. Click on the system I want to go to. Now that's not showing the correct system name there. However, in Elite Dangerous, a system can have several names associated with it. If you do see it, don't worry, it's still okay. So if we then plot a route, we can go there. Now what happens if you're doing something and you copy something else into the clipboard? Let's say if we go over here, let me copy that into the clipboard and paste it in. There's a way you can fix this by doing Control O, which will copy the correct system into back into the clipboard. You can go in there, paste it in, and then there we go. So yeah, so as a quick recap, Control V pastes the current clipboard into the search bar. Control O will retrieve the correct system from EDJP. Now, if we jump to this system, take us a couple of jumps. We've now jumped into the first system in this voxel. We'll grab a little bit of fuel. We don't want to have to call the fuel rats. I'll move away from the star. We'll do the honk of discovery. And there's nothing in here, so we can move on. But what we can now do is go back into the galaxy map. Click in there, control V, and we've got the next system we want to go to. Now this is a good example of how the voxels work. We can see here, system name, voxel name, mass code, series number, and at the very end, we've got all the system numbers. Now in this particular case, this voxel is quite large. It's got at least 122 systems in it. Some voxels will be smaller. So might only have like half a dozen systems possibly, or maybe one system. So hopefully this gives you an idea of how the systems relate to the voxels. So now if we click on that one and we can then go plot boot. And then we can jump to this system, scan it, maybe map anything of interest, and then on to the next one. When we get to the end of the voxel, what will happen is and see if we can find it. 123. That is a 123. Go a little bit higher. Let's go 150. But it's not 150. So let's try 130. Not 130. Let's try 124. 125. Okay, so this is what happened is the 124 in this case is the last system in the voxel. If we jumped into there and we tried to plot a route to 125, 
it would come up with no results found. At which point we go back to EDJP, we can go into the Boxel survey, and then we can go use next Boxel, go save and start, back into the game. Paste in the new start system, click on that, and away we go. And then you go through that until you've done that voxel, and then you can move on to the next voxel, and so on and so forth. And using this, you can have a whole sector voxel by voxel by voxel. So you can use this method to map an entire sector voxel by voxel and not miss anything. Just a word of caution though is. Voxels can have a lot of systems in them. As we've seen already, that one was just looking at had 125 systems. And there are potentially 4,096 D mass voxels in a sector. And as you go down to the B and A voxels, that number increases a lot. But if you are going to map an entire sector, maybe try one which has got a lot less mass. There are other things you can use the journal processor for, and we can look at those in another video, maybe. Also, if you've got a voice attack, you can make a command up that will automatically open up the galaxy map, paste in the system name, and put the route for you, and close the galaxy map. I have made one of these commands for myself, because I do use the box mapping on occasions. But I will make a video on how you can make that command, but that's going to be for another day. Hopefully this has made sense and it's been useful, and I'll see you in the next video. If you've enjoyed the video or found it useful, click the like button, and if you haven't already, hit the subscribe too, and share the video out. Until the next one, take care, and I'll see you soon. Toodles!